What we would like is, at least what I would like, is to have a program that can be accessible to the most introductory students, but then they can grow with it in the upper level courses. But I think JUMP at least serves this function for us. So this is what would be good for use in an introductory class. You probably don't have to go beyond intro stats. Um, in the upper level classes, you would use the modeling or the different, more complicated analysis tools. But if you wanted to look at the distribution or histogram of a given variable, um, you could see what each of these um, options do. You can get frequencies if categorical, you can make contingency tables, you can um, get means and standard errors and all of that, quantiles, box plots fitting distributions, testing to see if your data are normal or not. So if I do distribution, this is your standard jump window, which lists all your columns on the left, and then it typically has, you know, which, which ones of these columns or data sets do you want to look at. So the Y is always a dependent variable. Um, you can wait. <laughs> Um, variables. If you wanted to look at a particular variable distribution by a, tip of, uh, a given independent variable and break it up into different treatments, you can do it with the by option. So I'm just going to put um, how about Wednesday osmolarity and by temperature. So it's going to take all the values that are recorded for the Wednesday osmolarity um, measurement and it's going to look at the distribution by each temperature that we had, 4 degrees, 14 degrees, 22 degrees. So if you look at the top, it says temp 14C and then this is a vertical distribution of that histogram. I can go into um, display options and go horizontal if I want. So say I want to ask, is this a normal distribution? If I go to fit distribution, you can fit a log normal, normal, and all these other kinds of distributions to see if it fits. So this is fitted normal, and what it does over here is it draws what a normal distribution would look like in the little green outline. And then it has some statistics here that may or may not mean anything to you. But essentially, the goodness of fit test is what we would use to see if it's a significant deviation from normal. And when this probability is less than 0.05, you've significantly deviated. So this might be you know, the one thing that you've done to say, OK, I can use parametric statistics on this. I don't have to go to non-parametric. I guess another thing you can do is sort data the way you want, for whatever reason. Um, right now, it's kind of sorted by temperature. And if I didn't want to include the 14 degree C groups in whatever analysis I'm doing, I can go into rows or exclude. And then any analysis I do from there, it'll act like those data don't exist. And you can simply unexclude to get them back. But this is sorted by temperature. Well, if I wanted to sort by salinity, um, I can go into sort. I can say salinity. And you can do multiple levels. You can do salinity first, then temperature. If you wanted to sort by osmo 1, it'll sort by that. Um, and it makes a new table, actually. And you can name the new table whatever you want, or it can replace, and I never tell them to replace. So now all the salinities at 0% are first, et cetera. So you can sort data any which way you want. But really the nice thing is once you have the data entered, you can analyze so many different things without having to re-enter the data by hand. You can do these sorts and, and whatnot. Um, the analysis tools, of fit y by x. Essentially, you pick the variables, the dependent and independent variables again, 
And depending on the type of variable you put in, Jump will automatically do the appropriate statistic for you. So the initial thing is a scatter plot of the data. Here, look at what your data looked like. At 22 degrees, variables were, the osmolarities were higher than at 4 degrees. Just by looking, each of those dots represents a data point. So just by looking at that, the students might say, you know what, the values at 4 degrees look lower. Maybe there was an effect of temperature, you know, without even bothering with the stats. I feel like sometimes the students get bogged down in trying to understand the stats and they don't see the forest through the trees and they don't really see what's going on. So I like how it puts you with a visual first of what the data look like before any statistic is given. If I wanted to do a regression, how did Monday osmolarity vary with Tuesday osmolarity gives me a scatter plot. So you can see that they're positively correlated just from looking at the scatter plot. Okay, now what's my stat? How am I going to show this? Click here, and this is where you fit your lines. So you do your regression. So you can fit uh, a linear one, a polynomial one, splines for non-parametric stuff, um, but really fit line, and then it gives you the statistic. Here's the regression. Um, here's the R square for how much variance is explained by those variables um, and gives you a, a, a visual. And in Jump, the idea is that the graphics help you understand the statistics. I don't think it was made so you can put this in a paper. So you can cut and paste the image of this diagram but it won't have any of the axes on it. You would have to import it into PowerPoint or Illustrator and put in the axes yourself. Um, so it, it doesn't really do that for you graphically. But for the students to understand visually the differences between these two groups, it does that for you. So now if I wanted to save this, I can go um, into this option, Edit Journal. And now it's made a copy of it into a journal file that we can then go into file and save so that you can save these outputs as is.